longer. Now I now have the honor to invite Professor Nick Miles from Nottingham University. Um, Professor Nick Miles' current areas of research activity are in the vibration of fine particle mixtures, uh, i.e. granular dynamics and superconducting magnetic separation in collaboration with physicists. Uh, I have to admit I have no idea what, what it is. But we are inviting Professor Nick Miles, uh, not for that expertise, but for, for his uh, expertise in another area because Professor Nick Miles is Pro Vice Chancellor for Advancement of Nottingham University. He was the Pro Provost of, of the University of Nottingham Nimble um, campuses and he received an OBE for his work for further UK China educational entries. I think it's for that expertise we are inviting Professor Nick Miles to speak. Shall we? Thank, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I no longer vibrate particles. I no longer play around with superconducting magnets. I wish I did. That's about seven or eight years ago. Uh, and actually, it, it's the, the point that Shall we made at the end. The six years I spent in China, um, oversighting our campus there, and the kind of insights that that brought. And I was very interested, Jeremy, in your paper about the Twin City arrangements, because this is the reality of it. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that my colleague uh, Rob Avery Fritz from Nottingham City Council is here, because it's very much a kind of uh, a double act between the University of Nottingham uh, and the City of Nottingham. Uh, so, so, the, so the University of Nottingham plays a leading and pretty distinctive role in attracting Chinese inward investment to the UK. You know, our global footprint enables this to happen. And, and you, you get there a network that's hugely attractive uh, and it's known to Chinese investors. So there's a picture of the world. Let's just uh, talk a little bit about our global footprint. So we, um, our first campus, uh, so about 16 years ago we set up, one of the, we were the first British university to set a campus on in Malaysia, just south of Kuala Lumpur. Uh, that's grown over the years. We're now around about five and a half, six thousand students and six hundred uh, staff. I, I should just make a point here. That was 16 years ago. The University of Nottingham actually has got a history going back about 30 years on internationalisation. This had, the, the campus didn't come out of an idea. Well, it did, but but there's been years before that of building a policy of being international, which was bringing international students into Nottingham bringing international uh, staff into Nottingham, building international research partnerships. So our first campus was, uh, it was in Malaysia in uh, 1999. And then, um, uh, sorry, oh, that was University of Nottingham. I do apologize, I can't get my geography. So that in Nottingham, we've got around about 34,000 students, 7,000 staff, and it's about a, an hour and a half north of here. Then Malaysia campus in 1999, and then, uh, we set up in Ningbo in uh, 2004. Uh, it's grown from about 250 students, uh, business school students, in 2004 to over 7,000, now 900 staff. Uh, this global footprint is really, really important. Just some stats, and, and you can see some of the stats here talking about we've got five campuses, uh, three around, in and around Nottingham, and I'm going to focus on one in particular in a minute or two, and that campus is called Jubilee Campus, and it's the old rally bicycle site that Nottingham was famous for, a brownfield site that we took over in 1999, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute or two. So we've got the three around Nottingham, we've got the two international campuses, we have over 300 uh, Universities of the world we're involved with, with a quarter million alumni. This is what universities do. They connect across the world through their people and what they do. Uh, um, and actually, we've got probably closer to 45,000 students across the world. So, the, the Jubilee campus, this is where we do, we've got an innovation part there. In fact, we are one of four university innovation zones in the UK, which has helped boost what we do. And through this, we've, de 
we've developed a kind of ecosystem around Nottingham and the East Midlands that attracts in uh, businesses and companies. We've got about 60 businesses here, uh, employing over 600 people. So as a, as a mixture of uh, business and academic accommodation on this site, what's quite important is the, the physical infrastructure. And these are just some of the buildings we've got on site and you can see by their titles the kind of things they do at advanced manufacturing. In fact the most stunning building uh, and the history of it is really interesting is the GSK Sustainable Chemistry Laboratory um, and you may know that uh, it was opened uh, two days ago by the chief exec of GSK but it's, it's history it, it, it was um, it, it, let me say it grew from the ashes because it burned down the first time in 2014 overnight because it's totally a wooden building. But then they, we rebuilt it and we opened it and it's a really fascinating uh, partnership between the university, GSK and how to do clean sustainable chemistry. So we were excited by that and other activity. But the new build, the building on your right which I'll bring up, uh, this is... Um, what, to me what it's all about, which is talent development. This is a new uh, technology entrepreneurship centre that will open next month where we bring together, we host university spinners. We host in there our graduate and entrepreneurs, our student entrepreneurs, whoever wants to, and we parachute in there bunches of services. And that's co-located on, on the campus. We've actually started to mirror that in our China campus as well. So what you're starting to see is a kind of bridge forming for talent to move along. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute or two. So let's, let's go to China. So this is our Ningbo campus. In fact, it's a bit of an old photograph because we've got more infrastructure. In fact, not only have we got more infrastructure developing down here, a lot of this has started to develop over the last couple of years as well. So when we started in Ningbo in 2004, we were on the edges of the city. The city's kind of moved around us a bit, <coughs> which is not a bad thing because it brings new services to the university and the campus. So we, as I said, we started there with about uh, 250 students. We're now around about 7,000 students covering a range of programs and we do quite a lot of research and research and development. The critical thing is a huge talent pool that is developing there. And that's what the government, the Chinese government and the British government is attracted by it. But it's actually essentially about partnerships. And, and, and I think the importance here is, is the recognition both locally and nationally in China for the support for the university. Um, uh, so Xi Jinping in 2008 came to the campus when he was the party secretary of Zhejiang province. And in fact, he was involved in the opening of it. Uh, as you left. Um, I was fortunate to be there when, um, uh, when Jim Bao uh, came. The, their words were interesting because what they saw the university as, as a bridge, both to bring international students to see China, uh, and President uh, oh, Xi Jinping talked about Chinese higher education using Western uh, and developed educational resources, and, and it kind of echoes some of the things we're talking about earlier on, bringing things together for the benefit. And the one on the right is uh, she's, uh, President Xi's uh, state visit to, um, to the UK in 2015. That's our Vice Chancellor David Greenaway who met him. So the sense is that's important signalling on the support. But it happens both ways. The UK government have also been quite important in this. And this was in, um, we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary in 2014. The British ambassador um, at that time hosted a reception. The British embassy in Beijing and Lu Xiaoming uh, hosted a reception a couple of months later in the, in the embassy in London. And that, that's very strong signalling that the, gov the government at the top level were um, supportive of, of what was happening. It didn't happen overnight. So it comes back to a question about can we just set this up and go? No, you've got to be at it. You've got to, you've got to go through the the, the, well, we had to go through all the initial teething issues and from a university's perspective what's really interesting is actually until you produce your first graduates and once you get your first graduates out there that are both employable the parents start liking it and then it just grows from that so when I was out there 
I, I was very fortunate. I came in at a point where that was just starting to happen. And everything started taking off because people had confidence. A, you're there, feet in the ground. You're producing quality talent and it gives confidence. And I think that's the really important part that allows lot of the things which I'll talk about now to happen. And therefore, the support nationally from the governments. So I just want to, I mean, I'm just going to put some stuff up on our presence in China has enabled this. We've got over 60 partnerships with higher education institutions in China. Some of these are directly out of our campus in Ningbo. Some include our campus here in Ningbo. Some include our campus in Malaysia. So there's whole different varieties of how this can happen. I think the thing you're probably more interested in are some of these stories. I'll pick up a couple of those to talk in a bit more detail. These are the Chinese corporates and companies we are working with, either directly in the UK because of our presence in China or with our Ningbo campus. Uh, the one I'll, I will, uh, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just mention this one, I'll talk about a couple of examples. So the Ningbo government like what's happening. Because we've got a talent uh, pool there, they're interested in some of the skill sets that we bring. So they've invested in two initiatives uh, in the city of Ningbo. One's a, we set this um, International uh, Marine Economy and Technology Academy up, which is about generating actually kind of R&D that has got application, uh, sorry, by the way, Ningbo is about the third or fourth largest port in the world, I should mention. So there is a, it's not just about uh, marine in the sense of a port, but all the infrastructure around it. So they're interested in investing in us for talent, and therefore the International Marine Economy and Technology Academy. The other one that's just a new one is, uh, uh, they've, they've pumped in money to help us set up a new materials institute. The, one of the reasons for doing that, they've got one of the national material city, they've got material city funded directly from government. So again, they look at us as being a place where talent comes out uh, and, uh, and great ideas. And so the resources are being put in and it, what we are doing is building the talent to access those resources. A couple of examples Case, well, this, I've got three case studies. The last one is, I think, the most important one for the future. So this is an example with Avec Aviation's industry in China, where we've been working with them for a few years. It start, uh, in 2011, they, they invested in the UK, our campus in the UK, for an innovation centre, and that was because of our presence in China and the work we had done in it. So it's about commercialising some IP we had. Because the, the Avec, I think they, that was at Comac, I'm just about... I think they've announced the, the first um, medium-sized commercial airline, and we've been had some involvement in that. Uh, and so then, f from the IP, they, look, they start to work with us on training programs for, for some of their masters and PhDs. And then that started to move on to actual ups, um, to research opportunities, oh, it isn't on the research opportunities as well. So it's starting with something small, and a whole lot of stuff comes out of it. The key thing there is you've got to keep working at it. It's a continue, and that, that's great because the outcomes are good for us. The second uh, example is the, uh, this is the China Rolling Stock Corporation, where we, our business school in Nottingham and in, well, it's one business school with two locations, developed an international uh, talent development program uh, for their execs. So we've had about over five cohorts over the last two or three years through them. Uh, and that's been really successful where they move between, uh, between China and the UK, although there's been less movement in recent years because of some government policies. But it's, it's now moved on to R&D after that. You get to know these people, they see the your capabilities, see the talent you've got, and so other opportunities arise out of it. So that, that, that's an exciting one. The, the one that I think is... Well, actually, so, so Rob... Avery Phipps here from Naughty City Council just told me just now, because we're talking about sister cities, that uh, in November, the city of Nottingham and Ningbo, the city of Nottingham and Ningbo have just been awarded in China the Keys, what was it, Rob? Keys Cities Award. So, for the, for the, 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 as an exemplar, which is great news. But that has happened because of the work we've put in over the many years and the actual outcomes that happening and what we, Rob and I are quite interested in uh, the paper that was presented 
uh, I think somebody's, uh, where's Jeremy? Yes. Uh, you said it was 30%. Uh, it, it, and we would love to test that, because we will have data going back to say if that, if that is kind of work. So that's really kind of interesting. So when Nottingham University set up in Ningbo in 2004, the city of Nottingham signed a, 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 a twin sister agreement. It kind of lay dormant, to be frank with you. Uh, and that, that happened because the University of Young was setting up its programmes and things were developing. And then as, as the university, as I mentioned, started to uh, kind of be recognised, both in the talent to produce and therefore researchers started engaging with companies, there was, an, an interest grew back in Nottingham and with the city of Ningbo about reinvigorating that relationship. So what happened was, and, and the city of Nottingham has been quite smart in how it's dealt with it, one of the first things we did was name a friendship bridge a couple of years ago. So in 2014 was a 10 year anniversary of the University of Nottingham setting up in Ningbo, and 2015 was a 10 year anniversary of the agreement between the two cities. And that wasn't lost on our Chinese colleagues. So, and I think Vice Mayor John's comments are really kind of interesting here because he's saying uh, in the past 10 years, University of Nottingham, Ningbo, China, acts as a bridge linking the two cities. Actually, that, that bridge is about a talent bridge where ideas and talent uh, and capacity moves up and down. So that was in uh, June 2014. Uh, so the city of Nottingham responded in, uh, I think it was November 2015, this is Cultural Plaza in Ningbo, where they, they presented a, a bronze replica, actually. It's an, a, a, the rep, by the way, the replica of this Robin, of Robin Hood statue there was taken from the original, and I think I'm right, it was the daughter of the original designer who did it. So it's a nice story, and this was presented to, this, uh, to the city of Ningbo. And so that, that starts cementing the relationships and out of that, a number of things have started to happen. Particularly, Nottingham has produced a five-year plan that maps against what Ningbo wants to do through things like investment, both well, invest, investment, Chinese investment into the UK, things across health and education. So it's the first time a UK city has ever done this. So we're, and we, as a university, will be supporting the city where we can to make that happen. And by the way, Rob, who's sitting there, is a product of the University of Nottingham, Ningbo, China, so I'm really pleased about that, Rob. Uh, so the Ningbo government have also sponsored a trade investment office, which we put on our campus in, in Ningbo. And then there's a wider region. Uh, the, Ningbo, uh, sorry, the, the Midlands Engine. So we're, we're part of the Midlands Engine, and there's a big delegation going out to Ningbo and Shanghai and elsewhere. In November, so it's not just city to city, city to city fuel broader uh, regional relationships. And just coming back to the twinning city idea, it's more than twinning cities. So currently, we're having some discussions with Ningbo because they've got a relationship with Sao Paulo, Brazil. We've got a huge lot of activity as a university in Sao Paulo. So, how does that work, for example? Uh, the University of Nottingham has a strategic partnership with the University of Birmingham. I mean, quite a serious one. So how do we work together in the Midlands engine and supporting the cities of Nottingham and the cities of Birmingham? So I think we're kind of fascinated by this kind of neural network of talent and people supporting initiatives. And we just scratch the surface, frankly, on what is possible and what is capable. So my title of the talk was Trilateral. I've been talking about bilateral. So I'm going to give you a, a real trilateral um, knowledge exchange example. This is our Malaysia campus. And on, that, on our campus, we, we completed last year these biospheres. This is a £26 million pound investment by the Malaysian government to support an initiative called Crops for the Future. And it's about ut uh, utilising under used crops across the world. So this, this idea is funded by the Malaysian government with our campus in Malaysia, feeding back to UK and into China. We've got a lot of interest in this as well. So again, you've got these, what we call these soft landing spots across the world where ideas and knowledge kind of sit. And, and you, you build these bridges to let the ideas flow. And it's all 
about talent. It's all about relationships. It's all about people getting opportunities to do things. And it is the people that make it happen. So I hope this kind of shows that the, the kind of theory, and I don't mean the theory, Jeremy, in the sense that the paper, but you know, it does, it can happen, but you've got to, you've got to work at it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm happy to take questions. Again, uh, any, any questions from the audience? This guy. Um, thank you. It's a wonderful promotion of, uh, in, uh, sorry. <laughs> Nottingham University, and then also Nottingham's relationship with China, particularly Ningbo. I mean, I have to say that Ningbo is um, middle side of the city in China, but you are so successful in exploring the relationship with them and also the reward to your academic developments. Um, I regard Nottingham University as a, one of the most academic, most dynamic university, and so successful in creating these new things. Particularly, you have a one very, very successful institute called School of Contemporary Chinese Studies. Everyone only created by, introduced or created by, set up by a few years. But the impact, impact on the UK academy, I have to say, is higher, stronger than even Oxford, Cambridge, Chinese study centers. However, the whole audience will be surprised when, he, when they hear my words, they're so successful. But why are you closing down? It's so successful institute for Chinese studies. And it suddenly shut down by the end of this July. I really don't understand from academic perspective. Sorry about that, but it's a very, very critical question. And I think this is a you know, seminar we should have this kind of question. Thank you. You're not the first person that said that. I'll respond to that question. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting, you hear one side of the story, we see another side. So I think the point being is, one of the challenges we had, it was so focused, it didn't allow other aspects to, to kind of grow. So for example, we, we have physically closed the idea of that, all the people are there. So we've now brought in business, our Confucius Institute, which is a model Confucius Institute, allows that to grow. We have political scientists now involved in it. So I've actually, if you go there and you look around, you see the opportunities are, are going to flourish out of this. So you've, you've heard one story and we chat and all that. And, uh, but that yeah, and, and the point I'm making is that we make decisions because it's right for our academics, it's right for our university, and it's right for the future. And, that, and that's what we've done and, you know, it will flourish. All the aspects are there and are allowed to grow in other parts of the university. And we're now putting structures in that enables that breadth to shine out. Current, in, in its former place, it wasn't allowed because of the nature of it. It didn't get all the stuff and resources it needed. No, it will do. The written meetings, you know, what is the mechanism, I guess, to make sure that it's So, uh, that... So we've had these campuses in three different places. We've actually got a unit called the Asia Business Centre, about 17 or 18 people that actually glue the parts together and they move quite a lot. But actually our academics and our senior leadership move, there's quite a lot of mobility between the campuses. But the Asia Business Centre in particular enable the movement and look at the opportunities in different places and bring the right people together to make it happen. So that's probably, that's the mechanism.